and I looked at my watch. I'm like, five o'clock. Uh, that's fine. I got plenty of time because there is an open house from six to eight at the Dayton Amateur Radio Association. Uh oh, it's Eastern time. So once again, I had to jump up and run over here, and I'm just arriving. Wow. This doesn't look like amateurs. <laughs> That is quite a beam. And a heck of a lot of guy wires. I'm Matt from Minneapolis. I've been with this group for about 13 years. Um, we just have two tech members to the station. We're about to go into the radio room here, so all around. All right. Let's show around. EHS. EHS. Everything else has been added on, and we'll walk out of here into the other section here. We'll move on a bit. So in this room, we go everything up to 1.2 uh, gigs. We got the satellite stations. We actually have two of them now. Obviously, uh, don't have antennas on them yet, other than the ground plane antennas that are out there. Uh, all of the antenna patching here is manually done. So out of the back of all these radios, we run from antenna port one, antenna port two, wherever it is, over to that patch panel, and everything in this room above the line is our transmitters, and everything below the line are antennas. So I, if I want to select a different antenna for this radio, I'll go over here, over here and actually move the jumper cable to the antenna that I want to use. That way we don't accidentally get two radios transmitting into each other or anything crazy like that. Two racks of uh, repeater stuff here. V-Star stuff over here. I'm not a V-Star guy, so if you've got questions, you have to ask one of the other guys. This is, these are the link radios and the coming in for the voted uh, receiver for the main talking frequency. Positions in here. There's an ICOM 7610 there. There's a Flex 6500, I believe. Sitting here, there's a 10 Tech Omni 7 over there, and then there's an older uh, Kenwood radio 570 over there. Um, again, manual antenna patching here. So we've got all of our radio outputs down here, and then we have all of our antenna inputs over here. The exception to that is the outreach multiple inputs. So if you can see right here, the IC7600. Antenna 1 is going into the alpha, and if you look down here, the alpha is attached up here to the force field beam. So that's how we're going to patch it from that one. Um, either of these radios can go into this. I'm connected to get over right by right now. Amp. There's going to be another amp that sits right there. Yeah, it's a zoom spot. Radios in the future. Rotor controls. The big tower out back is done off the. What? Okay. What I didn't see him this morning either. As we were going in when you came to get me to dialysis. Century Club, but not the Century Club. It's 3905. 3905 Century Club. Yeah, that sounds familiar. So, yeah. Yep, this is where, when they say the Bureau, this is where it all starts. Huh? That sounds about right. So it's pretty good size. LP uh, powered. Okay, so I've got the same thing. I've got a 17 kilowatt. A generator whole house because okay. I live in Wyoming. My understanding based on technical skills is I'll be using one later tonight. Okay. This is a 12, that's what 40 through 20, and then 30, 40 with two dollars there. Oh, it does have 40 also? Yeah. Yeah, we've got two 40 meter beans, see the ray down there. Uh, that is optimized for 160 since we have some of those stuff on 80. Uh, we can use it on 40 and 80, but it's like I said, it's optimized for 160. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Tell my wife, this is what I want. Yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> <laughs> right? We all. 198 foot power. Yeah. Uh, there's a generator there hiding between the buildings. It's not as big as it looks. That's uh, <laughs> pretty. The generator is pretty much a full, full station generator. We don't have everything wired into it just because we don't want to overload it. Uh, if people get stupid and plug a bunch of stuff in here in the shop, then we could uh, overload the generator. But everything that we need to run the building is including those we've seen from the public. And then we lift them up there with the crane. Well, stuff, I didn't want to be, I'll tell you when you get up there, you can actually stand on the top plate, and I'm I'm six foot two, and I'm, my head's not above the, the center support there. Oh, uh, was it a crane that was actually on the tower, or was it separate? No, 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 we set a crane in the parking lot, yeah. and it swung around, and we had a couple tower climbers up there on the tower, and they lowered down on top, and they put the last six holes in <laughs> oh, I wanted the tower climber. So, well, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. How, how big? How long is the oh. longest elevator? I want to say the boom is like 34 feet. The elements are like 38. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> is it rotating? Uh, 450, 500 pounds, I'm guessing. Uh, and that's completely a guess. I'm not really not sure. Um, and this is a Force 12 beam over here. Uh, it's something like four elements on everything. 10 through uh, 20, and then 30 and 40 is two elements down the end. 
Uh, it's sort of like a long periodic event. I like cat, 30 or 40 something. Strikes there. Uh, there's an, the bottom dipole here is an 80 meter inverted V and then a 160 meter bazooka, double bazooka above that. What's the, then, what's the inverted V? Uh, that is the, TV, right? yeah, that is a link to the other side of a uh, two site uh, six meter repeater. Cross yeah, I believe that's what they're using. This tower I don't do much with. The ATV guy, this is pretty much the ATV tower. Okay. Uh, we hung a couple of the little, <laughs> I'm telling you, that tower's a mess. I don't know if I told you guys or not. I'm one of the tower climbers here. Everything that you see over there was before I got here. Yeah. Everything that you see over this way is, <laughs> this is all my work here. Oh. Nice and neat and clean. Just <laughs> glued to stuff over there. I didn't have anything to do with it. So, <laughs> telephone company, right? Yeah, it, that was, that's amateur work. And then yeah. this is sort of what I do professionally. So, so we, we yeah, keep everything like professional. I'm actually a firefighter full time. Oh, okay. I'm an assistant fire chief. And then on the side, one of my other guys is the county EMA for us. He and I have a tower company. We do a wireless internet uh, oh. company. So oh. we, we've got about 40 okay. towers that we maintain. Part time professional. He's full-time professional. I'm, I'm part-time professional, but uh, yeah, that's it's a lot different than that. Yeah, so you got your trade and everything. everything you know? Okay, that's a great question. So you see the white fence? That's us right now. Yeah. yeah. We are getting an appraisal on that, and she's selling the six and a half acres that goes oh. L around us in the next month or two. That's a nice. So this is going to be about three times larger than it is right now, wow. within a month or two. Oh, you guys are buying it? Yeah, we're buying it, and the house is staying, the buildings are staying. Uh, there's going to be. 160 meter four square we think out there in the, in another K9 AY and uh, I don't even know what we're going to put out there. so it, we're pretty excited about acquiring that property but uh, we'll see how that goes yeah it's pretty cool and then our station manager we're hoping is going to be able to live in the house and keep a really close eye on stuff because he's uh, like I said single no kids I think I mentioned that to you guys earlier yeah. so, so which house would you get up to how, how far would it go in there uh, let's oh, see. Which house, her house is right there. Oh, so she would sell that house. Yeah, that house. This is L shaped, so it goes from the wood line all the way over to there's a metal fence over there. Oh my God! All that. That's all. It's six and a half acres that we've been purchasing, and I think we own. Lots in here. There's very lots of stuff. All kinds of stuff to use, but uh, and just tools and various things like that. You can take yeah, it's cool from. This is Sony Action Cam. So it's the same thing. He's got a little bit of white and like it. Okay, I'm going to go over here where there's no wind. Um, everyone here is real nice. Two things that I learned is that, uh, number one, the members for DARA are actually all over the country and even even some other countries, uh, Texas, uh, Wyoming, and stuff like that. So it's not just the people here in Dayton. And they, and they, they know a lot about, you know, these guys are from out of town, and yet they know everything. The other thing I learned is that they have a... They have a guy that messes with their repeater every year at Hamvention, and he moves from hotel to hotel, and they can't find him, and he messes with their repeater. He transmits in a... Man, isn't that crazy? Uh, but they haven't been able to find him because he moves so much. Anyway, this is pretty cool. Obviously, um, it's almost overwhelming. Like, there's just so much stuff you, didn't, you don't even know where to start. One thing I thought I was kind of funny is that I was thinking they were all guy wires. Then, he, then I realized, well, that's an inverted V. They've got a lot of V's. They got everything, you know. Uh, it's almost overwhelming. <laughs>